20 years ago in 2001, the word selfie had never ever been written on any piece of paper, electronic medium or digital medium out there in the world. By 2013, however, the word had gained the grand status of being placed in the English Oxford Dictionary, showcasing a meteoric rise of the word itself that paralleled the rise of our own technology use. By 2014, you could even use it as a Scrabble word for a mighty nine points. So as you would all know by now then, unless of course you've been living under a rock, a selfie refers to any sort of self-portrait photograph, typically with a phone or a digital camera. When you hear me define the word, it seems like nothing more than a fad, nothing more than a quick picture that you might experiment with. But as we've seen through the likes of social media, especially the giant brand of Snapchat, Selfies are pervasive throughout our global culture, with people even going to the lengths of surgery to improve their look in selfies. For more on that, look at our video on Zoom dysmorphia, where we touched on another thing called Snapchat dysmorphia. But what is the motivation behind taking photos and posting them on social media sites? And what particular personalities are the most prone to taking these sorts of pictures? Photo sharing, and specifically selfies, play an important part in the overall experience of social networking sites. But where is the science behind it? Well, a Korean study from 2016 tried to quantify the motivations behind why people take so many selfies. On top of that, they tried to recognize personality traits that could act as predictors of who is most likely to take a selfie versus a regular group photo or a portrait. Unsurprisingly, the researchers postulated four possible motivations that could lead to posting selfies at greater frequencies than the average person. One, attention-seeking behavior. Two, for communication purposes. Three, for archiving, as in saving it. And four, just for plain boredom and entertainment. These four motivations also directly correlate to personality traits such as narcissism, which is, again, Quite unsurprising, because if you've seen somebody who posts a lot of selfies, this is actually quite common behavior. To understand the importance of a study like this, we have to first consider the opposite, in other words, the lack of studies that are like it, that set it apart from the rest of mainstream psychological and anthropological research. One such literature review shows that while some research in communication fields have examined the motivations behind social networking behaviors and have uncovered relationships between social networking use and personality traits, there has actually been quite little, if any, research focusing on how selfies, a term that's almost synonymous with social media use nowadays, are associated with personal motivations. Given the widespread multi-dimensional influence that selfies can have on an individual's everyday life, from seeing a very attractive selfie of, I don't know, Kendall Jenner and that ruining your day because you start comparing yourself to her, or perhaps you know somebody who posts a lot of selfies and that influences your portrayal of how you see them in your day-to-day -day life, this research is quite paramount in extrapolating key information to help us understand how these selfies actually have a physical relationship. As a quick side note, the concept of a uses and gratification paradigm coined by Katz back in 1959 suggests that motivations should be considered more important determinants of behaviors than personality traits because motivations are more at the forefront of the mind of a person during a situation compared to their personality traits. As such, we're going to look at this specifically at how motivations influence individuals to take a selfie and then we'll see if there's any correlation between these motivations and how they can neatly map onto a greater personality characteristic. This will allow us to recognize what motivations cause people to post a selfie and what personality characteristics are then commonly associated with those impulses. <laughs> Making it sound like selfies are some kind of horrible disease and posting one is a horrible thing, obviously that's not true, it's just an interesting piece of literature that does relate to the idea of facial aesthetics because we know that the overuse of posting selfies does have some roots in body dysmorphia such as snapchat dysmorphia zoom dysmorphia but that's not to say that there's anything harmful or really wrong about selfies it's just an interesting term and i think it should be looked at the sample used in this particular study consisted of 319 respondents who were identified as selfie takers quote unquote whatever that means, unsurprisingly the research consisted of asking participants in an interview what their motivations were when they decided to post a selfie on a social media website. 
Initially, 66 items were endorsed as motivations for selfie taking. However, considerable overlap in these motivations meant that researchers could only identify 48 real reasons for why you'd want to post a selfie. After complicated factor analysis from the researchers, they recognized patterns in these response formats and therefore could categorize these responses into four main groups of motivators that were stated earlier, the communication, archiving, entertainment, so on, which were used to map to different personality traits. An extra questionnaire was also completed by the participants who were asked to respond on a Likert type scale, so a scale with answers ranging from 1, I strongly agree, to 7, I strongly disagree. And if we look at this table, a range of motivations can fit into all four of those broader categories. For example, the concept of having your existence reaffirmed by others, showing off or seeking attention from the opposite gender, all correspond to the broader motivation of attention-seeking behaviors. If we look at the category of communication, specific factors like keeping in touch with friends and family and acquaintances are also quite relevant. Nothing shows the globalization and the scale of our global online culture more than having communication being defined through selfie taking. It's like saying, oh, instead of talking to my parents, I just send them a selfie of me in like, I don't know, Vanuatu or something once a month. That's not communication. And I think this is quite dystopian, even though that obviously wasn't the intention of the researchers. The third motivator, or archiving, is consisted of a photo album-like factor, including recording a specific moment or a special day, or some point in one's life in general, and it's quite self-explanatory. Finally, the last motivator of entertainment was made up of ideas like passing the time when you're bored, and perhaps paradoxically to refresh oneself. As we can see by the numbers that are bolded on the right-hand side of the table, there were large loadings of each factor, meaning a large percentage of respondents recognized these very specific motivators as contributing factors to themselves for taking selfies. To pull one statistic out of the table, 91% of selfie takers admitted to being motivated to take a selfie to entertain themselves when they're bored. While we're on the topic of selfies, and to avoid sounding like a broken record, how about we entertain ourselves with a few examples of how selfies can go so very wrong. But of course, in order to reward you for that, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the Coof's channel. If you enjoy more of the cognitive psychology and cultural anthropology rather than the facial aesthetic stuff, then also let us know in the comments so we can cater to all types of audiences. Alright, so let's go back to selfies. With all of these motivators recognized, in that particular study, they used a well-renowned personality assessment to undertake on the participants and assess their levels of narcissism in relation to their motivations for taking a selfie. Once again, a Likert type scale was used, ranging from 1 to 7, strongly agree to strongly disagree. And on this questionnaire, one of the questions, for example, were, I think I am attractive and I have no problem sharing that. The concept behind this assessment is to recognize that certain individuals who have high levels of the personality characteristic of narcissism will consistently respond in a specific way to these questions. Just as chocolate lovers will probably love chocolate cake, chocolate milkshakes, chocolates and all other chocolates in general, <laughs> narcissists will probably respond to questions like the one just posed with answers like I strongly agree. And why shouldn't they? If you're attractive, there's nothing wrong with sharing it. Maybe I'm a narcissist. By attempting to correlate the patterns of narcissists and the motivations for taking selfies, researchers can then extrapolate what motivates people who are narcissistic. In the world of personality research, which encapsulates processes like the narcissistic assessment, this is perhaps one of the most debated fields in mainstream psychological research. What is also fascinating is the intrinsic link to facial aesthetics research. When we consider that people intend to prove their facial appearance for their own self-confidence, for other people to be popular or to follow the trends of other celebrities, we can see that an individual's personality is an important consideration for cosmetic professionals. Linking the concepts of personality and outward appearance is an important step for the industry, an industry which is trying to encapsulate the overall motivations of people in order to best suit their needs. If you feel like you may be starting to realize the importance of personality research in the beauty industry, then you should conduct some of your own research on topics like the Big Five personality test, which considers the influence of characteristics like extroversion and openness, or attempt to weigh up the positives and negatives of the infamous Meyer-Briggs personality test. While these tests aren't perfect and it's very difficult to 
classify all the humans on Earth into 20 or so categories, it does provide one such way for researchers and aesthetic professionals to try to gauge how successful a person's corrective change to their physical appearance may be, because patient-clinician satisfaction is the main priority of any cosmetic procedure. If you're not happy with the end result, then there was just no reason for you to spend all that money and heartache to get something changed. My personal favourite example of using personality in facial aesthetics is how surgeons determine if a male's patient is suitable for cosmetic surgery. Male cosmetic patients that are described as Simon's, single immature male that's overly expectant and narcissistic, should be avoided. Bullstrode et al's paper suggests that this acronym should actually be changed to SLAP Simon, adding that male patients who still live at home with their parents at an age when it's quite normal to move out and are generally immature people are unsuitable candidates for cosmetic surgery and should be looked out for and avoided. My guess, as a male myself, would be because these types of young men believe that looks are everything, being young, dumb and broke, and their surgeons are the gatekeepers to a better life. And so if your surgeon can't apparate a Brad Pitt-like nose out of thin air, you tend to blame them for not giving you the chance at a better life. So that's why, as a, if I was a surgeon, I would definitely avoid that. It's just needless liability and headache, and why take that? You, they're paying the same as everybody else. To sum things up, the four main motivations for posting selfies at large frequencies on social media, such as Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, are 1. Attention-seeking behaviours which parallel the React-centric platforms of Facebook and Instagram. In other words, we get a dopamine rush when we get likes on our selfies because that's nice. 2. Communication, perhaps most pertinent to Snapchat, would be sending streaks for example to your friends and family and trying to keep that streak alive over many days, years, I don't know, I've seen ones that go for like 2-3 years. So that would be an example of communication. Number three would be archiving or storing something for a later memory, like a wedding, an image, uh, when you're firefighting and you gotta just take a picture of somebody's misery. <laughs> Number four would be entertainment, which is just simply the act of passing time or just curing boredom. A good example would be playing with Snapchat and Instagram filters. Also, the three motivators of attention seeking, communication and archiving are the most likely to result in an overall generalized increase in intention to post a selfie. The personality characteristic of narcissism, which is basically an admiration of oneself, is the best predictor of an individual's intention to post a selfie, and that individual's tendency to post more and more of these selfies frequently increases with narcissism. So with all of this in mind, take a second to reflect just how much do you and your friends love posting selfies?